So numbers came out for January 2023 and the numbers are not exactly flattering when it comes to the Toronto real estate market. The sales reported were one of the lowest Januaries in over 20 years. There was one key piece of data that stood out to me that wasn't talked about very much. Let's go through that in this video. I'm Michael Luzes. I'm a realtor in the greater Toronto area. Drop a comment down below on what you think that key metric was when it comes to sales in the greater Toronto area. If you ever want to book a call with me, click on that first link in the description down below. So all those headlines are out and I did make that video which talked about what is actually happening on the ground level in the real estate market. I did find one key piece of data, which is super important. This article from Bloomberg basically summarizes all the articles that have come out. Toronto's housing market enters deep freeze with sales down. Sales in the Toronto housing market ground to the slowest pace since the first month of the pandemic as buyers contend with some of the highest borrowing costs they've seen in 15 years. So around 3,000 homes were sold in Canada's largest city in January, Lowest number since April 2020. There are 10 fewer sales in January compared to December 2022. And that's from data that was released by the Toronto Regional Real Estate Board. It also goes on to mention that fewer sellers put homes on the market in January with new listings falling 3.7% from a year earlier. Inventory still piled up. Almost 9,300 properties were for sale more than double last year's total. It also notes that January is often one of the slowest months for the real estate market as a whole. And many people wait until spring to do deals. So from a headline perspective, these kind of articles get a ton of clickbait. We're going to see these kind of numbers for the next few months as everything compared to January, February, March of 2022 is obviously going to be a shortfall. That was one of the hottest markets of all time and the records were set on so many levels. One thing that stood out to me was the activity that we're seeing on the ground level in the last part of January. So I wanted to take a deeper dive and find out if what I've been seeing on the ground level is actually true when it comes to the data. So let's rewind it back to January, 2022 and look at the GTA sales. Here's a sales snapshot, just over 5,700 sales, medium price, just over 1.1 million, average sale price, just over 1.25 million. Here's a key factor that we're gonna compare a little bit later. Sale to list price ratio, 115.8%, six median days on the market, and 80% of sales sold above asking. The most sales happened between 1.25 and 1.5 million. And we also saw a lot of action over that $2 million mark. When it comes to condos, most condos, especially one bedrooms, were selling somewhere between 600 and 700,000, that's where this is coming from, and barely anything under $500,000. So we jump forward to January, 2023, just around 3,000 sales, median sale price, 915,000, average sale price, 1,050,000. So again, as we take a look at this sale to list price ratio, 98.8% and 15 median days on the market, 27% of the sales went above asking. And if we take a look at the most active price point, 1 million to 1.25 million, which actually is pretty reflective as most people with the interest rate increases lost somewhere around 20% of their buying power. There's also much less sales over 2 million compared to other price points. And in condos, we're seeing much more in that 500 to 600 range but still not a ton below 500,000. So I know those two slides were not all that exciting because that's what you can see from all the news outlets out there. However, there is a piece of data that really stuck out to me and I think is super important as we move forward and we're now into February. So on the ground level, I've been definitely been feeling an uptick in activity for the last probably week and a half or so. So I decided to take a deeper dive of what that data looks like. So I took the numbers from January 24th to January 31st. And again, GTA sales, over 1,000 sales. So a third of January sales happened in the last seven days of the month. Median sale price, 930,000. And average sale price, 1,080. So this is actually $30,000 higher than it was for the entire month on average. Sales to list price ratio, 99.8%. So basically what properties are listed at is pretty much what they've been selling for as a whole, 12 median days on the market. Another number that jumps out, 30% of the sales sold for over asking price. And again, that 1 million to 1.25 million is by far the leader of the pack. As we look at the first couple days of February, 350 sales, $981,000 medium price point, 1.12 million average sale price with a, almost 100% sale to list price ratio, 
And again, 30% of sales above asking. We're also starting to see more activity in the 1.25 to $1.5 million range. So that last little piece of data is reflective to what I've been seeing on the ground level while working with my buyers and working with sellers. The other thing we've been seeing is that properties that were listed in November and December, making a comeback today at offer date pricing. So they didn't get the number that they wanted in the past two or three months. And now we're coming back with a super low offer date to see if they can get as much as possible. Typically buyers do dictate how the market's going by whether or not they're gonna buy the properties that are for sale. So we will be interesting to see where these properties land after doing those offer dates. I do know that they've been getting a ton of showings now that they've dropped the price significantly. So I'm curious to see if it'll relate to what it actually sells for. I'm Michael Luzes, and if you found any value in today's video, hit that like and subscribe button down below.